Bob the Builder, can he build it? Of course he can. My name is Van der Puchert and this is Finding Frequency. Building things. Spent most of my day today building a thing. I mentioned, I think yesterday, that uh, I'm attempting to relocate my microphone arm. And uh, I have now built what is the first part of this new contraption. The only thing is, I don't know if you can hear it. It's a bit wobbly. I've relocated my uh, microphone arm to the right-hand side because I have this weird little small office and I'm trying to optimize the space and not make it look like a engineering slash consultant brain exploded in here. So just to make it a little bit neater and try to get some order, I've now decided to build this little contraption, invoking the essence and spirit of my dad because he's a legendary DIYer. And uh, yeah, I, I used to build a whole bunch of stuff in South Africa. Um, not so much things like this, but you know, I wasn't shy working on motorcycles and with my dad in his car or you know, things like that. So it was good to get my hands on some, you know, like some manual labor for a change. And I don't think not, not manual labor, but per perhaps like creative labor, like doing something building something with my hands. I miss that. It's like, like I reminisced a little bit about the time that I was in the art school where um, I was on the sculpture side of things where I used to build things, big sculptures with all kinds of metal and things. And I miss that. I miss being able to conceptualize something and then build. But there's also a challenge with this because I think I always make this mistake and I'm like verging on making this mistake even with this contraption because I don't, like fundamentally there's a few things wrong with this thing and I'm pointing at it like as if you can see it but um, it is a bit wobbly it's not perfect and also one of the design challenges that I have is that I I don't want to destroy the furniture that I already have because this might become a little hand-me-down for Francie later on when we get through a pandemic and I get a proper office um, you know like I, I just I feel respectful towards some of the things we've bought, so I don't want to be drilling holes in it. So I need to find ways to attach this contraption of mine without destroying the existing furniture and not make my office look really bad. And uh, the reason I wanted to mention this, it made me think today of um, how we used to create things at art school and made me think of my friend Pity. Now, what a name, Pity. But what a soft-spoken and creative guy. Um, I'll never forget him. And I wonder what he's doing these days. I've completely lost touch with him. But he was really a talented painter. Um, uh, a, a very interesting style of like impressionist kind of painting with some realism mixed into it. But always used to paint these like psychedelic scenes. And I, I always respected what he did. And even with his rough, rough brush strokes, he, ma he managed to capture a moment and also the right proportions and these kind of things. But one thing I remember of Pity, and I'm sometimes a little bit impatient with this, is that he would paint a section of a canvas. And perhaps when you look at it and when I looked at it, it didn't necessarily look like anything. But then he will go sit down, either with his cup of coffee or uh, something to eat. or And he would sit there for a long, long time, just staring at that canvas before he makes any changes or additions to it just sitting there living with it for a while and in a way even in the design world that I'm moving now is that they encourage you to prototype things and sometimes when people think prototyping it's just about screwing around with straws and all kinds of bullshit to build stuff and then have fun no at the moment I have this piece of wood like roughly attached to my desk and the arm is attached to it in a very strange way. It's not the way that I wanted to have have it done um, when it's completed. But on the one hand, I'm trying to prototype what it would feel like if the arm is indeed here on the right right hand side. So I'm talking to you with this arm here, and then also there's some of the the challenges that I haven't been able to solve, like the wobbliness. Now. In a way, you could probably also live with the wobble. Maybe the wobble is not that bad. It's just part of the design. It's still functional. Because the, the reason I'm mentioning the wobble is I know myself as that 
even like especially now, if I'm going to attempt to fix this wobble or make a decision to fix it, I can guarantee you I'm probably going to screw it up. Not the action of fixing it, but the addition that I'm going to do or the change that I'm going to make to this design that I've created here is probably not going to be that great. And what I'm trying to say is like sometimes you just have to live with something a little bit. Think about it a little bit. Just be with it. Um, look at all the imperfections and just uh, absorb it and then think about um, how you could improve it. But before you take action, just make sure that you've lived with it long enough. And um, I'm forcing myself. I'm biting on my tongue. I don't know if that's the right term to use in this in this phase, but I'm very tempted to go out and drill more holes and actually attach all the other things that I want to attach. But no, I have to do that tomorrow. I want to live with this a little bit first and see if this is going to work. And perhaps, and I think, I'm probably not going to solve the wobble today. Maybe a bit later before I make any drastic changes to this little contraption here. I have a few other bigger problems to solve before I worry about the little wobble. So wobble aside, I'm thankful for other people being thankful because my clients in the United States are celebrating Thanksgiving. And if you are one of my listeners from the United States, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you are having a good time, even in this stressful time. And perhaps also that you can't be with family and friends. But at least you can do the Polish thing. There's never an excuse not to eat a lot. So hopefully that is happening on your side of the world. So, I need to get back to do some stuff. I've been DIYing. I need to catch up on a few administrations and a few emails and one or two of my other non-American clients. And remember, don't take those little wobbles too seriously. Thanks for listening.